Hey everybody, this is Kim Huffman from the port. I hope you're all doing well today. I want to talk to you today about the want of a nail. I brought my nail and my hammer, but before I do so, a couple of announcements, especially for our seniors. Our young at heart pitch-ins are canceled until further notice, and the senior day at Scottsburg is also postponed, probably rescheduled for August. In 1 Chronicles 22.3, David prepared large quantities of iron to make nails to help build the temple. And in Isaiah 22, 3, it says, I will fasten him, speaking of the king, as a nail in a sure place to hold the nation of Judah together. For the want of a nail, the shoe was lost. For the want of a shoe, the horse was lost. For the want of the horse... A rider was lost. For the want of the rider, the battle was lost. For the want of the battle, the kingdom was lost. And all for the want of a horseshoe nail. There were, was a man building uh, a porch, and he was using a hammer and nails and uh, holding those boards together that way. Uh, he was really doing a pretty good job, but his wife... Uh, looked out and said, hey, uh, you're like lightning. And he thought that was a compliment. He said, oh, you mean I'm really fast? And she said, no, you never hit the nail in the same spot twice. Well, in part, we first strike the hammer on the nail head. That's our job. That's our work. The Lord says in Jeremiah 23, 39, is not my word like a hammer that shatters a rock? If we are like the nail, then the hammer is the word of God. We must let the word of God drive us home so we are firmly held in the right place. The sharp end of the nail, which is the other end of the nail, that's pretty important too because when the hammer strikes the head of the nail, that's what makes it penetrate and go in good. Now, you and I as Christians, we need to have a point to our lives so that we go in well too. Philippians 1.21 says, For me to live is Christ. And Philippians 4.13 says, I can do all things through Christ who gives me strength. What are you living for? What's the point to your life? I hope you have one. Let me tell you another story. Two men were putting siding on a house. And one man was handing the nails up to the second guy who was pounding them in to hold the siding on. Well, he was throwing every second or third nail away. The first guy says, what are you doing that for? The, the nails are pointed in the wrong direction, he responded. Well, the, guy, the first guy says, well, that's okay because... Those nails are for the other side of the house. Well, the third part of the nail is the shaft, the backbone, the main part of the nail. And it's what holds things together. Hebrews 11.6 says, Without faith, it's impossible to please God. Just as nails come in various sizes and shapes, so do Christians. Different nails have different purposes. Each of us must use the gift that we have for the glory of God as we serve our Lord. Sometimes, though, however, we've come across bent nails like this one here. They may have been weak or they may have been hit wrong. They can be straightened out, however, and then used. I've many times straightened out the nail by hitting it in the bent spot straight enough that it can be used once again. That's the way many people are in our world. They've been bent. So our job as Christians is to straighten them out. In 2 Timothy 2, verse 21, be a vessel for honor, sanctified and useful to the master. These are difficult times in which we live. Let's 
be the nail that holds things together. In the words of our governor, thanks for staying home and spreading the word, not the virus.